want to know how I can improve my stage presentation or the public speaking as you watch. Is it a good idea to move around? Yes, as long as it's with intention. <laughs> and the thing that's really important is that when you watch yourself, is to make sure that you are disassociating with the discomfort that you feel inside, and imagine that you're watching somebody else. 今回のエピソードは全編英語でお届けしています。ゲストで来ていただいたヘレン・イワタには今度2月の24日日本時間で午前9時半から日本人のための英語のプレゼンテーションというレクチャーをしていただきます。参加費は50ドルです。ぜひ概要欄の方をチェックして参加してくださいね。日本に長年住んでいるヘレンだからこそ私たち日本人がどういうふうにしたら英語のプレゼンテーションをより良いものにすることができるかっていうのを熟知しています。ですのでこのワークショップに興味がある方は今すぐ概要欄の方をチェックしてみてくださいね。Hey guys, it's Aiko. I'm an American English pronunciation coach and business coach. So I have a special guest today,、uh, Helen Iwata from Sasuga Communications. And then、uh, we're going to discuss about my TEDx talk.、Uh, and、uh, I want to ask her three questions、uh, because I always want to improve my English. And then I also, I'm also curious to know how. Native English speakers perceive my talk and how do they know that I am a second language learner? So,、uh, welcome, Helen. Thank you very much for coming to my show. <laughs> Thank you. It, you know, it took me so long to get here. <laughs> no, actually,、Thank、I mean,、you. let's just own up here. Basically, we were having a conversation and you just decided to hit record, which I think. <laughs> Fantastic. I love a spontaneous conversation. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we already talked about、uh, that. I'm going to ask three questions.、Uh, so let's start with the first one. So the first one, because Helen is a native English speaker,、uh, I want to know how she recognizes that I speak English as a second language by watch, watching my TEDx talk. So Um, yeah, How, what were we talking about? Like, let's start, <laughs> let's、okay. start the conversation. So, so, I was first of all, I would say it's really, really difficult to pinpoint as a native English speaker what it is about someone else's English that makes me think, oh, she's not a native speaker of English. I re watched.、Um, Your fantastic TED talk. It's such a great talk, by the way. Really good in so many, so many ways.、Um, and what I was thinking about is that may, you know, because I know that pronunciation is really your area of expertise.、Um, and overall, it's fantastic. The pronunciation is amazing. It, you're so easy to understand. And, and I'm, I'm not sure what it is. There are just some tiny little things where I think, Wait, there's something's a little bit there. There was one part where you were saying vibration and the B sounded more like a V, so it came out as vi- vibration a little bit. Vi- so, so hold on. The B, so the vibration, B. Vi- vibration, yes. So, wait, wait. So, my B sounded more like V. Yeah, exactly, which is really <laughs> intuitive because you would expect it to be the other way around. Strong. Breath, vibration, and the energy from the singers around me. Vibration, vibration, vibration.、Um, so there's really tiny things, and it's very hard for me to say exactly what it is. And I think that because they are tiny, that's probably not the area to focus on. Another part, so I'm going to actually go in three, three steps with minor to the most important. I'm going to save the best till last. So, the second one I would say is that a lot of people kind of, I would say a lot of people sort of expect to hear some kind of accent, right? Whether you're talking and you're hearing an American accent or you're hearing a British accent or Australian or whatever it is, you know, even when you're um, um, speaking in Japanese, people have different regional、um, accents. And, you know, even if you talk about like standard British English, well, even that, 
you know, people talk about Queen's English or it's King's English now. Um, Queen's English, it's really only the Queen who speaks Queen's English, or spoke Queen's English. So um, you're expecting to hear some sort of accent or dialect or something um, that gives an indication of where the person's from. And what happens sometimes with people like you, Aiko, who are non-native speakers, but you've studied to a really high level, is you sort of have such a neutral accent that it, I think it can confuse people. And I remember I, you know, I, I went to interpreting school for years and um, one of my um, interpreter, in, uh, one of my instructors there, uh, one of the sensei, she, you know, she was Japanese. She had the most amazing English. And she said the same thing that people couldn't place her because she didn't have uh, an identifiable accent. So you could, if you wanted to, think, I'm actually going to pursue this accent and really, really focus on that if you wanted to, if it's important to you. Oh, that's so interesting because, yeah, I guess I was aiming for some like really generalized like a general American English, G-A-E. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, the thing is, it's, it's like, how important is that to you? So, but I would say the third one, this is the one that, that probably there's the most potential. And, um, you know, I love less effort and more impact. So I think this is one that's the least effort to actually, to, to make a change with, and it's going to have most impact in how you come across, is it's not so much... I would say the accent, but it's the intonation in quite a few of the places yeah. that you're speaking. Yeah, yeah I noticed. It's and so what I would also say is that when you were giving the the TED talk compared to when you're speaking with me on a like you know normally, um, that came up more. There were more sort of unnatural intonation parts. Right, right. I actually, um, the way that I practiced my speech was that, okay, so I want to go up here, I want to go down here. But yeah. on stage, I was really nervous. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Oh, I, I know. I mean, I've been there, done that. Yeah, it's a nice. <laughs> and strongly, you will feel and hear your breath feel different vibrations in different parts. So something that's good that I will focus on that. But but my second question though was that what would be the next step for me to focus on in order to keep improving? I mean, you kind of mentioned it already, but. Um, um, so if, are you talking specifically then for, uh, for improving in the speak on stage type of, or speak in a workshop type of situation? Or are you talking for, for day-to-day -day conversation? For me, maybe day-to-day -day conversations. People say that, like, you're close. So what is, what is yeah, it? What, what, is. what is it to go over the thing? Okay, there. So you see, I have to listen really, really carefully. There was a little bit with the the there that wasn't, like, it didn't come across as 100% like the native English the. The? The. P-H-E. Yeah. So I know you can do it when you're conscious of it. Sorry, was it the consonant or the vowel or the timing that I was saying or the length? <laughs> what, what is it? I'm like so curious. It's so tricky. I feel like we have to rewind and <laughs> play it again. kind of want to say it was the consonant part of it. It's really tricky to identify. It's like that, that there's something there. What is it? What is it that's not? You know, and as we were talking before, we were talking about like different accents. So... Um, there's that to take into consideration as well, that some people won't hear someone something as differently as other people might hear. I used to pronounce TH, the, the voice TH, as D for a yeah. long time. It, it, it took me a while to really understand the difference between L and R. So I asked like a lot of native English speakers, like how different L and R for you? And then they were like, they're very different. <laughs> well, you know what's really oh. I find fascinating having been, you know, lived in Japan for over 30 years now. Sometimes I start to find it a little bit difficult to tell the difference between L and R. What? what? Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really odd. I've had it <laughs> a few times and it, it, I was like, what's going on here? 
Yeah. So you're used to Japanese sounds like la di do de do is. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's like it, it's very much what you become accustomed to, you know, what you're used to hearing. Because as well, that's another thing. When I hear a lot of Japanese people speaking in English, my ear is very accustomed to that because I'm surrounded by it so much. Whereas I know that some people, um, like, you know, my husband's Japanese, he's been to the States and he's uh, attempted to say something and nobody can understand what he's saying, even though it sounds, well, it's like, you know, exactly. It's like you talked about in your TED talk, right? It doesn't seem like a significant difference, but sometimes that tiny little bit, um, and you'd think that a lot of the time people would be able to understand from context, but it just doesn't register for some reason. It's really curious. It's like, yeah, it's because what we have in our mind and what we hear in our mind is different from what comes across to the other person. That's good to hear that you're you're really getting used to the Japanese sounds, though. So I want to ask you more about that maybe in a separate video <laughs> in the future. So that would be very interesting. <laughs> I guess I know what to do for the next step as, you know, I was talking with you that maybe consonants, be more aware of all the details when I don't have to be aware when I speak Japanese, but for English, I need to be more aware of what's going on in the sounds that I am creating. <laughs> and then ideally, I can catch myself or I don't even make that mix mistake anymore. All right, thank you. And then the third question uh, is about public speaking, because since you're in the, the profession in that area, so I want to know how I can improve my stage presentation or the public speaking as you watch my mm -hmm. performance. Um, so the first thing, though, that I actually considered um and this one, I like for anyone who looks at my TED talk back in 2016, I wasn't doing this heels, right? So I noticed that you had you had maybe there was about this high heels, right? Uh -huh. Yes, higher heels. Like as a woman on stage, when you go on with like really high heels, it has it just immediately elevates your whole presence. Like and 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 this was not the case with me. I had like I had flat shoes on in 2016, and now I look back and I'm like, oh, <laughs> having heels just makes like a huge difference. Of course, it takes a little bit of practice to walk <laughs> in them as well. <laughs> but that's it, it. You know, the nonverbal communication as well is huge. So uh, being able to sort of walk, you know, um, very confidently on stage in heels immediately, you you have a strong impact. I'll get high, higher heels next time because especially like my height, like I'm like short, right? So I'm always conscious about my height. So having higher view mm -hmm. <laughs> would be, will give me more, more confidence too. Yeah. And it, it's really great for posture as well. Like uh -huh. it, it, it's, it's hard to have a slouchy posture if you're wearing heels. <laughs> You brought up a great point though there as well is the is the moving around because a lot of people ask me about this you know in terms of presentation skills um is it a good idea to move around and uh, yes as long as it's with intention because some people are nervous and they get stuck and some people are nervous and they kind of fidget around <laughs> so your ideal is to be moving, but moving intentionally. So you're moving to engage the, the people in the audience um, or you're moving in a way that's related to what it is that you're saying. Yeah, so I learned I learned that in Toastmasters, mm. like move with intention, like past is here, present exactly. and future, something like that. Like make yeah. a point when you move, not just walking. Yeah. Any other tips? Uh, how was my voice projection? Like on stage, should I project my voice more? I don't recall anything being odd there. Um, it, it, it comes back to what we talked about in terms of the intonation. So there were just parts where I was thinking, oh, it would have been, I would have wanted to go up there or down there. <laughs> the emphasis that you're putting on certain words. That you know, that's uh, what makes a difference as well. What I noticed was that on stage, I thought I was 
speaking really loudly because I heard my voice really loudly, right? But then when I watched the performance, I'm like, oh, my voice is kind of quiet, mm. quieter than I thought. That was one thing that was kind of interesting because I was in it, right? But then when I watch it from the third person's perspective, I'm like, oh, oh, it, did, it, it didn't feel the same. Yeah, this is this is really common, um, you know, in, in presentation skills workshops. Um, very often I'm encouraging participants to use bigger gestures or speak louder and often they hesitate and so I have them video themselves and then like they go oh guess I yatte mite <laughs> right let's really exaggerate and so they do what they think is an exaggeration and then when they play it back like oh actually that what I thought was exaggerated version is actually a an effective version yeah that's so true I thought like wait did I was I too loud you know stuff like that but no no that was just yeah. that wasn't loud enough maybe <laughs> so I thought and then another thing is that I thought I paused more and then I made a pause in one place very intentionally I felt it was forever like forever right? but then when I watch it I'm like oh I went on to the next like right away yeah and that forced me to question dr lindenberg's hypothesis by now i knew how difficult it was oh it was totally totally that's one of my um first experiences when i was learning presentation skills is uh and this is way back in the old days before we had smartphones um, so I was in, I was in the, uh, the group and I was giving the presentation and my mind went blank. I went into a complete panic and I just, I was like, I just stopped speaking. And then after what seemed like such a long time, I thought of something to say and I, and I continued and then they said, okay, now let's watch the replay of the video. Cause it was the old days where we had the massive video camera. <laughs> And you don't just like, you know, watch it on your smartphone. You you watch it in front of the whole group. And I was like, that was, you know, if that wasn't embarrassing enough as it was the first time, now I have to relive the whole experience again. <laughs> and as I watched it, it was like, I'm talking. And I paused and I continued. And I was just like, wow, how can it be that what seemed to me on the inside like such a, a long time, such a panic-filled long time, but when I actually saw it on video, the objective perspective, it's like, oh, that actually looks pretty decent, looks quite good. And that really gave me confidence. And then I started to think, oh, maybe I can do this presentation thing. <laughs> oh, wow, that's... That's really interesting. So is, if you didn't watch the replay? I wouldn't have had that level of confidence at that early stage. Wow. Wow. So like when we practice, we should record it and watch it. Otherwise, we feel like, oh, no, I'm not doing it right. But then when I watch it, oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually for most people see that it's better than they thought. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's it's painful and valuable. <laughs> and the thing that's really important is that when you watch yourself, is to make sure that you are disassociating with the discomfort that you feel inside, and imagine that you're watching somebody else. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, even now, like for me, that the my TED talk from 2016, I'm it's like oh. <laughs> And other people see it and they're like, oh, your TED Talk's really good. And I'm like, oh. We don't want to create tension in the environment. And so we learn the Japanese concept of gaman, putting up with the situation. It didn't look like that. It didn't look like that at all. So I was really surprised when I watched your YouTube <laughs> on that. I'm like, oh, wow, even you as a professional like uh, speaker on public speaking presentation and all that, like you still panicked inside. Wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, I honestly, I really wanted to run off the stage. 
I was so close. Like there's the voice inside going, run away, run away. <laughs> we must escape. <laughs> and it was, I, I, it was only, I believe, the fact that I knew about the, you know, the survival mechanism um, because I knew of that, that I was like, okay, focus on the audience, focus on the audience, focus on the audience. Because that's what we do is when we're presenting and we get nervous is we're, we're focusing on ourselves and like, what does everybody think of me? Am I going to say it right? What if I get my words wrong? What if I get my pronunciation wrong? <laughs> right. Uh, when we start to focus on the audience and what we're delivering to them, that's when it all starts to become a lot easier. Wow. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. So for this video, I'm going to list your TEDx talk in the description <laughs> box. So you can, I mean, people can watch it too. Uh, to me, like it was amazing. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much for the powerful conversation, Helen. That's You're most welcome. Thank you. All right. So I guess you know, maybe we make another video separately, but um, thank you very much for sharing your experience, expertise, and also the tips uh, for me. But then those tips will help a lot of Japanese speakers as well. So thank so, you very much, Helen, for your time. And thank you very much for coming to my show. No worries. It's all about less effort and more impact. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys later. And thank you, Helen. Okay. Bye.